You are now tuned in to the Next Dimension University broadcast. Come out of the Godnosphere and experience the next dimension in destiny with us. Be empowered and educated through any of the 61 and growing ministry career fields. We are a school of purpose. We are a school of destiny. We are poised and ready to prepare, equip, empower, and deploy you into your kingdom assignment. We are the lowest cost, fully accredited Bible college in Southern California today. And now, join us as your destiny began. Training, I want, I want to segue into that. Um, uh, but in order for that to happen, you guys need to understand the honor subject. We talked about that before. You need someone above you. You need someone alongside you. And you need someone not below you, but someone that you're discipling. So you have, you have to have someone that's speaking into your life, someone that's pouring into your life. If you don't have that, you are going to uh, be kind of reckless in your behavior and in your conduct and in your credibility. People that do not have other people speaking into their life, the scripture says there in 13th chapter of Hebrews and 17th verse, it says, obey those that have the rulership over your life it says the rulership means the ones that are setting the standards for your life. If you don't have people that are setting standards for your life, then you are too comfortable. You are too relaxed. And the Bible said in the last days, they're going to be eating, drinking, and being merry, and taking their ease. You don't want to be postured uh, in that way. You don't want to be identified as one taking your ease. So the apostle of your life, the prophetic mentor of your life is the one that's going to put a flare under your rear in order for you to get about the Lord's business, okay? Because he's the one that's going to encourage you that when you put your hands to the plow and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And so you need that one in your, in your ear gate at all times, putting those demands on you. What did I say? putting the demands on you. If you don't have someone putting demands on you, you're going to find yourself getting in a relaxed disposition, a relaxed mode, and a relaxed posture. And it's in that posture that the enemy's, uh, what do they call that, um, weasels, or, you know, uh, to crawl. Yes, that's the nature of a serpent. He crawls and, and comes in through Entrances like where that come from? Where you come from? That's how. That's the nature of a serpent, okay? And you look up and he's right there, and, and because you are you are at, at ease, and God don't want you at ease in the kingdom. People get like, well, how are you able to do all of that? I'm like, I got a high motor. You are. You need to have a high motor. I don't want to be around. God bless you, uh, Dean Gentilly, and your beautiful wife. I don't want to be around people that are lethargic. I don't want to be around people that are slothful. I don't want to be around people that are sluggish, have no aim, have no direction, have no motor. Are you hearing me today? You got to be around people that have some vim, some vigor, and some vitality. You got to be around people. As the Bible said, the fervent prayer of the righteous avail it much. The Bible said, be not slothful in business, but fervent in the spirit serving the Lord. John 9 and 4 says, I must work the works of him who have sent me while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. We've got to get about the Lord's business. Amen? The scripture goes on to say in, in uh, Proverbs 22 and 29, seest thou man diligent in his business, he'll stand before kings. He'll not stand before mean and obscure men. So we've got to be on the ball about the kingdom of God, and th that's what the purpose of the primary prophet, the apostle of your life, the one that is speaking into your life, they put that demand on you because uh, the natural course of things is to be lazy, okay? That's the natural course of things, is to lie down and go to sleep. The natural course of things is to give up, amen? There's only one thing separating you from Skid Row right now. There's only one thing separating you from, from serving God right now is a decision. You decide right now that I'm going to give up. 
uh, and you're not going to go to work anymore. You're not going to get up from your bed anymore. You're not going to brush your teeth. You're not going to comb your hair. You're on your way to Skid Row. Oh, y'all hearing me today? If you right now you get decide make a decision that you know what I'm not going to church anymore I'm not going to read my Bible anymore I'm not going to pray in the Holy Ghost anymore and you know what you getting you drying up the oil is leaving you going to be talking loud ain't saying nothing oh you hear me today you going you, you going to be be before people you, you know, got people right now they're a phantom of who they were because of their apostasy. I said they're a phantom of who they were because of their apostasy. The word apostasy means they're, that they're fallen, that they have fallen from where they've fallen. And so they think that the anointing is still on them and they're shaking like Samson and there ain't no anointing there. There's no oil in the lamp. Oh, y'all hearing me today? Come on, give God a great big hand because I'm saying a whole lot of good stuff right there in Jesus' name. And you know what? That's for me. I want that. Tell somebody, I want me some of that. Glory to God. So you need the, the man of God, woman of God in your life evaluating you, checking. Everybody say honor. honor. Everybody say honor. honor. Everybody say honor. honor. 13th chapter, book of Romans, it was the seventh verse, said, render to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, and honor to whom honor is due. 1 Timothy 5, 17 says, to the elder that rule well, he's counted worthy of double honor. Simply put, honor, look up. If you can't look up to somebody, you ain't honoring a soul. And you say, well, Dr. McLeod, I'm looking up to God all the time. He's the one that I honor. No, no. You revere God and you regard man. You revere God, that's what the unjust judge uh, in, right there in the narrative said, that he neither, he neither revered God nor did he regard man. So we've got to regard man. Everybody say regard man. So if you don't understand honor, we, we won't have organization here at Next Dimension University. You won't have it there at your local churches. You won't have it in your ministry. If you don't understand that honor is one of the disciplines of the kingdom, then you are just going to have a bunch of people coming together and it's going to be chaos. And so I'm committed to restoring the Godmosphere here at Next Dimension University so that when people come through the foyer and they come inside the entrance, the anointing will knock them off their feet right there at the door. If you're in agreement with that, give God a great big hand of applause. This is a learning and scholastic environment, but it's an anointed environment. Are you guys with me? Because according to 1027 Isaiah, it's only the anointing that destroys the yokes. Amen? And so some of us today, if we're not, if we, I don't want us to get stuck on stupid and think, oh, we're just going to get a bunch of academics here, and we're going to learn systematic theology, we're going to learn this hermeneutics, we're going to learn this homiletics, and then I'm going to throw down. Uh, you're going to throw down, all right, and, uh, and, and the devil's going to whip you upside your head, and then you are going to be, you know, on the sidelines of the road to destiny with the hood of your destiny vehicle up with smoke emanating out of it. We don't want you on the sidelines of destiny. We want you to have the order of things well understood. So tell somebody honor. honor. Come on, say honor. honor. Come on, say honor. honor. Don't look to your pastor. Don't look to your leaders and look at them like you put on your pants the same way I put on my pants. Men to men, uh, woman to men too, y'all be wearing pants also. Okay, so it's important for us to download this discipline. I've learned that coming up in the church that I grew up in, it was the mothers that raised me in the church. And they taught me respect in the way that, you know, it was, unca it was uncharacteristic of, you know, it, but they taught it to me, okay? Joel, if you can't take it, you can't make it. Dry those crocodile tears and go clean that bathroom. Go clean that urinal, minister. <laughs> I'd be like, okay. I, but I want to preach. I want to preach. Well, you're going to preach right there in that urinal right now. 
We gonna have, you're going to have the urinal ministry. Go get your business cards from Kinko's, your urinal ministry from Joel McLeod. What <laughs> oh, y'all hearing me is that? Learn to go low and then God will elevate you. That's what David did. He went low. He wasn't trying to be all up in the mix. He wasn't trying to be in the mix. He wasn't trying to brown nose because if you start brown nosing from the beginning, you're going to be brown nosing in the middle and you're going to be brown nosing at the end. Okay, and so we, again, the, the value thing and the thing that we ought to appreciate is the anointing. Tell somebody, go after the anointing. Tell somebody, go after the anointing. Tell somebody, go after the anointing. That's what Elisha did. Elisha went after the anointing. There was 50 sons of the prophet there in 2 Kings 2 and 2, 2 and 4, 2 and 6, that whole narrative there. There was 50 sons of the prophet that stood abroad. They were hecklers. They, were, they had access to the man of God, but they opted to stand on the outskirts and ridicule and scandalize and criticize. They could have came into the aura, they could have came into the zone of the prophetic flow, but instead they decided that I'm just going to stand on the outskirts and I'm going to heckle, I'm going to be critical, I'm going to find some kind of excuse not to get into the thickness of the anointing. Wow. And for some of us, we're postured like that right now. We're not conscious of it, but that's what's going on. And so it's incumbent of the five-fold uh, gubernatorial officers to let you know how the kingdom functions and how the, the kingdom principles, the kingdom anointing, and that's what we should be gravitating to. Tell somebody, I'm gravitating to the anointing. We, some of us want to gravitate to making that money. Like Simeon in the eighth chapter of Acts saw the apostle Paul and the apostle John Glory to God, walking in that apostolic, uh, uh, prophetic anointing and laying hands and people were getting healed and delivered. And, and, he, and Simeon, and some of you all got to really take note here, Simeon used to be a sorcerer, okay? So when we talk about, you know, simonizing the church, simonizing the church, simonizing, that means you're practicing sorcery with the church, with the church money, with the church pulpit. Oh, y'all hear me today. We're desecrating the things of God, treating those things that are sacred triflingly. Is that a word, triflingly, doctor? Yeah. Oh, y'all hear me today. And so don't be like Simeon and try to buy and purchase the gift because if you read that narrative there in the 8th chapter of Acts, you'll find out that Peter was, had compassion on him and wanted to help him, but at the, 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 the root of that iniquity went so far down in his gut that uh, uh, Peter was almost suggesting that he was helpless and hopeless in his depraved state. But tell somebody, oh yeah, that iniquity could be severed. Tell somebody that iniquity could be severed. Yeah, it could be severed. 16 and 16 Proverbs talks about the iniquity being purged by mercy and truth. And when you get the truth and you get the rhema and you begin to walk in it, and God begin to deliver you from the inside out. If you're in agreement with that, give God a great big hand of applause today. But honor, you got to look up to somebody. If you ain't looking up to somebody, you are a charlatan. You are like my, 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 my father-in-law back in the day used to say, jack leg preacher. I don't know where, they, where that derived, I don't know where they derived from, but jack leg. You are a maverick, okay? You're, 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 you're insubordinate. You don't want to be, even, you know, I'm a prophet. You say, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. Uh, the, the body of Christ is my church. No. Samuel, 1 Samuel 1, Hannah, his mama, gave him to Eli, yes. right? Yes, yes. And he worked in the church. Yes. His whole life. He worked in his church. And he became one of the best prophets ever, according to 319 
uh, 1 Samuel said not one of Samuel's words. His reputation was so credible from Dan to Bathsheba. That, that included the entire nation of Israel respected the prophetic uh, profile of Samuel. The Bible said not one of his words fell to the ground. In other words, what he, his prophetic declaration were right on point. He wasn't trying to read nobody, because if you read somebody, that's the spirit of familiarity. Let nobody be reading you. This is not no psychic network. We don't do no reading. Tell somebody, we ain't no reading going on here. And some of y'all be messed up with y'all terminology. God shows me things. No, you say, I see things. I see, this is not sixth sense. I see things. You mean you have the gift of discerning of spirits? Is that what you're saying? I have the gift of discernment. There's no such thing. Read your Bible. It's called the gift of discerning of spirits. That means you discern good spirits and you discern bad spirits. Your discernment, all you always see is rats on the roof of the church. Demons in the corner and what have you. Tell somebody we got to get our pneumatology right. Tell somebody we got to get our pneumatology right in Jesus' name. But you got to honor. You have to honor. And don't try to do it, don't try to circumvent the kingdom system. Yes, sir. Don't try to circumvent that sorcery in and of itself. When you're trying to concoct, when you're trying to manufacture, when you're trying to manipulate, when you're trying to man Uber, you see all those words have one thing in common, man. Get the man out of it and gravitate to the anointing. If you're in agreement with that, give God a great big hand of applause. Gravitate to the anointing. Because ain't no power in your flesh. Ain't no power in your carnality. Are y'all hearing me today? Tell somebody, I want the power. The power of the Holy Ghost, power of the anointing. So now we, I know we 21st century and we have the non-denominational churches and we have the churches of grace theology and all of that and the mega churches, but I still want some power. I want power flowing through me. Oh, y'all hearing me today? I want to be able to lay hands and something happens. They said the effectual. That means something is being affected. And we ought to be affectors. We ought to go through life affecting change, altering destinies, laying on hands, casting out devils. You can't cast out devils being no calm, cool, and collected. All the men, all of us were anomalies. All the great men of God were anomalies. All of them were eccentric. All of them. They weren't no... Catherine Kuhlman, Mary Etta Woodward, you know, all of them. Uh, Amy Simple McPherson. All of the matriarchs and patriarchs of times past. They were all considered crazy. But crazy in a good way. Tell somebody, crazy in a good way. I'm not talking about that bipolarity that some of y'all, not nobody up in this spot. And y'all be trying to talk about, I got that mad, what do you call it, the black woman syndrome, mad black woman syndrome. No, you just bipolar. <laughs> some of y'all tripolar. <laughs> I'm not talking about anybody up in here. I'm not talking about anybody up in here. Tell you, they would say, I know he's not talking about me. Come on, I know he's not talking, he's certainly not talking about me. And then, do, then, and then do the exorcist on them. <laughs> oh, Jesus, let me get back on point here. Honor, honor, look up to somebody, because if you can't tilt your head up, first of all, you got to look up, you got to sit under somebody. Nobody wants to sit under nobody anymore. Pastor King, you know, we, we came up, you're about as old as I am. <laughs> You know, we came up together. I know uh, Dr. Dobson. We came up together. 75, 76, 77. You know, you know it was a long time ago when you got that, that pronunciation about 77. And you do, when you do 19 anora, you know that's been a long time ago. When you do 19 anora, <laughs> that's a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. But back then, they taught you honor. And some, some, two things got booted out of the church. Two things. The women, not the women, the mothers of the church, their role has been, I don't know, this becoming significant here. Right? 
and honor. Honor. Now, several people are at fault here. Several, several entities are at fault here with the honor deal because there's been pulpit scandals. There have been, uh, you know, monetary scandals. And so our view of the uh, models of credibility and the models of honor have been uh, defaced and polluted and corrupted. But tell somebody, in every career field, there are good representation and there are bad. There are good attorneys and there are some real corrupt attorneys. There's some good doctors and there's some jacked up doctors. Oh, you guys hearing me? Even in the ministry, there are good preachers with great credibility and then there's those crooks. Oh, y'all hearing me today? But I need you to still, you know what? You decide where you're going to go. So don't talk about the man of God. You there. Well, the Lord told me to be there. Well, stop talking about him then. And guess what? What you sow is what you're going to reap. God's going to call you to a field of ministry. And what you, those seeds that you put out in the atmosphere, guess what? They, they're going to have to find a ground to be watered and so forth, and that, and they're going to come back up and haunt you. So be careful what you put out there, amen? But you got to sit under somebody. You have to look up to somebody, and you have to sit under. Somebody say, sit. sit. Come on, somebody say, sit. sit. That's what they used to tell me all the time. I despise when they used to tell me that. <laughs> sit down, man of God. Sit. Uh, I don't want to sit. I want to work. I want to move. I want to preach. I want to teach. I want to be a front. Sit. Isn't that something that you resist? Because most of y'all in here, you know, I'm not going to say you're like that preacher that uh, we knew there at Biola College. He was just walking on campus with his lime green suit, you know, and, and heard there was a lot of money that could be made as a preacher. And so he was on the campus doing his thing. Oh, y'all hear me today. I'm not saying that that's how you are, but you, you want to be up front for some of you. And if you face that iniquity, uh, what you deny, you empower. Turn to your neighbor and say, what you deny, you empower. So, so uh, you know, you got to address those areas of your life. you got to address them. But you're here because we want to show you the right way to keep the anointing on your life, to stay under the mantle so that you could be effective, so that you could be powerful because the enemy don't care if you have no power. <laughs> you're not on his radar. <laughs> you don't even count. You have some power, he has a devilish device and a satanic strategy for your destiny. Oh, y'all hear me today? I got three, four minutes. All right, so what am I saying? I'm saying regarding uh, the minister in training outline, you guys, I'm gonna allow you to, to visit it. And the whole idea for me going there, and let's just consider the theology of faith, uh, we've come to a close on that. Of course, we'll bring it up, you know, as, as time allows in the future. Thank you for listening into our broadcast. Now log on to nextdimensionuniversity.com and register for your next season of formal training and preparation. If you do not know your calling or just want to enhance your knowledge, Next Dimension University is clearly your next step. So embrace your destiny and be the best you can be. Yes, your destiny starts with us. Your destiny starts today.